Hello, 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 and welcome to a new C Sharp Hour. I'm Adrian, your host on this walk in the C Sharp Forest. Uh, got a couple things to go through today. And that should be pretty interesting. Um, some of the stuff that we're going to go through has been around for a while. Some of it's super duper brand new. Uh, it's a little more C-sharp focused than beta focused today because I just wanted to cover some of the bases of tools that are out there to help you get things done on a daily basis from day to day to day to day. Um, so let's just, let's just roll into this. And we'll get my desktop up here for you. All right. So, first thing, a little call out to upcoming Twitch events and such here on Data Stacks Academy. Right now, we're looking at this episode. But Friday on the 26th at 1 p.m., uh, Jeff and David are going to be diving into killer video application development. They're going to be doing a little bit more with the Python and graph work that they've been working on in, in previous episodes and continuing on that. Then, May 2nd, the Thursday, the AIM... Let's see, wait, yeah, is not the AIM. The thing we'll be diving into is another C-sharp hour. So I'll be posting what content I will be covering on the description of that real soon. Then on May 3rd, that Friday, I'm hoping, Christine and I are both hoping to get episode 5 of building the Geo app trucks that we're building, which is food food trucks that we've been working on. <clears throat> um, if scheduling conflicts come up, though, we might have to push that to a later date. But right now, we are scheduled for that. And then we're definitely scheduled for May 7th on that. Another killer video application development on May 3rd. And as you can see, we've got some more C-sharp hours coming up. With that covered, let's dive into... .NET Fiddle. So this, this is a completely online thing where you can just go in here and, and basically start writing some C-sharp. For example, this one, you just go in and say run, and it's hello world, so it spits the stuff out right there. Similar to some of the things that people put together for, whoo, sun is shining right in my face. The people have put together for things like Go and JavaScript. Let's here, let's try to add a little thing, just to, just to see what we got here. Console.writeline, see it's got autocomplete, which is real nice. Another line of text. There we go. And then run it. Boom. There we go. Another line of text. That's exactly what we wanted. Then let's try to let's see what happens if we get input, huh? Read. Uh, let's actually do this. Let's do bar something equals this. And then we'll do console dot right line uh, something. And that'll work for us. So let's see what, what does that do? So run. Ah, read not supported. That's a bummer. So it's not really a console, it's just output. So let's just make it say Testing out the console. And that should run no problem. Yep, there we go. So I think if you hit save, yeah, so you can do do a .NET, .NET Fiddle Academy account, or you can log in with Twitter or whatever and then save stuff. So let's, let me actually log in with my Twitter account. 
Make sure you activate it through a link sent to your email. Oh, give me, give me two seconds. I'll go do that real quick. Hmm. I don't see an email from them yet. Oh, there it is. Cool. Okay, so now I should be able to go in and off that way. Yeah. So now we get other features here and should be able to go in. Oh, yeah. Favorites. Account my fiddles. Let's save it. Please enter a oh, fiddle name. Just test driving. Save it. Now I can go in here and go my fiddles. It should show up. Yep, there it is. So you just go ahead and click it and it should, yep, load it right back up. So what else we got? We got MVC, Nancy, Script Console, C Sharp, V4.5, Roslyn. So it should be the I mean, basically the same thing, right? So we can do auto run too. And what's nice about that is let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say public class something stuff. Uh, uh, oops. This. I forget my exact syntax here. Yeah. Oh yeah, there we go. And let's say public void uh, do this for public. Let's see about public static void. Can I do that? just takes a second for the uh, the squiggly line to disappear. But then we're going to say return uh, the value here. Oh, I'm being a dummy. I'm returning a string. So that's not, let's, should it be this? Uh, either way, I'll do that, and then let's say console dot right line um, something. What did I call it? Get out of there, IntelliSense. Something stuff dot do thing. That should give us the code. Oh, yep, there it is. The value here. So the auto run. If you click yes, it just basically saves it. Oh, whoa! What did I do there? I don't want that. It saves it and runs it every time you make a particular change. Um, like if I go in and just type console dot write stuff or da da, and then semicolon should incur a save. Whoops. And yeah, as you can see, it ran it. So that's pretty cool. Let's not save that. Let's hit new. And yeah, it gets me right back that to that. Convert to VB.net. Oh, let's let's do that. That's oh trippy. Haven't seen this in ages. Let's do public class. See if it. I want to see if it corrects the case appropriately. Uh, some new class uh, in class uh, public shared. Something. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do public. Uh, is it just public string this? Oh, I gotta say sub, sub, and then in sub, and here is return the values. I forget how to. Uh, I forget how it goes. Anyway, <laughs> haven't written haven't written VB.net in a thousand years, and this is the C sharp hour. But yeah, so anyway, you can go back and forth, convert to C sharp, so you can take your VB.net stuff and put it in there. 
comes in real handy if you're porting something. All right, so that's that's one of the tools in our tool chest that we can use just to try things out. Like if you don't have an IDE or you don't have access to uh, a machine with the .NET CLR and stuff on it, you can always use this as a quick demo uh, site. Then let's go ahead and get into Writer again. .NET resources, and let's actually create a new notes file. Interesting. How, where did I put that on my... Oh, it's saved. That's the path for that saved link. It's kind of weird looking. Do C sharp hour episode five, I believe we're on. So there's that, and then let's do code episode five. All right, we've got make good schema migrations explorer. Open up this one back up. Put, 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 come on. Oh, there it goes. It's just taking a minute. That was really weird. All right. We did a quick review of .NET Fiddle online. link in there for that. Unfortunate. I guess uh, I don't get that link anymore. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, the last thing we were building was sonic damage, so let's dig back into that and get. Let's write something around it. Um, put that in. Getting back into whoops, into our Sonic damage application and database. All right. So it looks like we got the database out there. Oh, we created a dev up and dev down. Something that I like to do just to give us an environment. Let's bounce out here and see where see what networks we got listed ah, okay so let's docker oh, 
look to see what's running. Nothing. Okay, so Docker network remove truxnet. Boom. All right. So now we can basically run. So in here we got systemic environment, database, schema migrations. So we want to build out our database again, make sure it's up and running. So let's do dev up. And that should get us going there. All right, migratory C sharping. <laughs> is, that what, is that what I named it? That's cracking me up. All right, and we should have, oh, we don't have that running. So we got Cassie container. Oh, conflict container name is already in use by another. Oh, okay. So let's do Docker uh, move Cassie container. Now do dev up. Okay, so we already got the network. That's cool. There, now we got the, now the container's running. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, running 3114. And then let's see, where did we get with migrations? Oh yeah, so let's see, clear that out. Then we'll run. I believe I have it running where? Yeah, we're just calling it a CQL SH straight, which works for us in this situation, but it really doesn't give us a true migration because it's not managing state or anything else about where where what we're we're tracking, right? Echo Docker network, yeah, okay. All right, next thing's next here. What what do we want to build? That's really the question. What's the next thing that we should add at this point? I think we did, yeah, I kind of talked about maybe just writing a data schema migrator for Apache, Cassandra, and C-sharp. I'm not sure if we want to do that, but maybe, maybe that is what we want to do. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's actually work on that. Let's work on writing a data migration tool, a data schema migration tool, and data migration tool in C-sharp. Right? That sounds like fun, I think. I think. So let's work on that. That's what we're going to start working on. And as first steps, let's get... Let's, uh, let's actually take some notes here. We, we can start from this, I guess. So here's our, oh, here's our program with our, oh yeah, that's right. We wrote out and did the insert statement here. So we have some data in here that we can run. So let's actually run this. Just look at the data in the database real quick. Nice, 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 cool, okay. Oh yeah, and we ended up with this weird, whoops, I'll do that. This weird text, that's right. Some band, uh, whatever, <laughs> release the album. I think we were doing like 1996, uh, 04, 04. Yeah, and then it would parse it for us, the C sharp parses it for us, and we get it in the right format to get inserted. And read or not going to write some data now. Hit enter. Ready? Oh, ready or not. There we go. Okay. So that should be in our artist. Let's just give me a 
Give me a console. I just want a console. Jump to console. Let's read that. Yeah, beautiful. Perfect. Okay, there's our record. As expected, with the weird characters in there for whatever reason. Alright, let's... We know all this stuff in here works, so this is great reference material to work from, as we have built out in previous episodes. But let's take a look at our notes here. Deciding on really building out a migration, oops, C sharp migration app for Apache Cassandra schema migrations. Now, so let's see, what do we, what do we call that? ACSM? <laughs> uh, ACSM. I don't know. Apache Cassandra Schema Migrations. Mission. Build an application using C Sharp to do Apache Cassandra slash DSC data schema migrations. Okay. So basically a schema migration application would need to uh, application should just let's short it shorten it. App will provide uh, additive um, or actually let's do this. App will take CQL files based on date time and up keyword for migrations up of data schema app will execute the CQL files in order dated by date time will then do the same. Oh, let's actually do up the and up or down keyword. All right, and then app will maintain state. Let's maintain state of up or down state. A, let's see, a maintain a table of up or down state of the, the database key space. All right, so we're going to use the key space from the perspective of like schema slash database itself. Um, we want to have the assumption that the key space is already created, partly because with Apache Cassandra and Datastacks inter, uh, Enterprise, once you create the key space, um, the the catch is that has information and configuration based on your replication factor uh your cl other configuration options around the idea of how many nodes you're going to use or need to use or not use uh so as that changes per say development environment or local dev environment like a docker container with one apache cassandra node and then you roll it out to say dev or production, which may have three or may have five or may have 50 or 6,000 or however many nodes. You'll want to be able to not uh, roll up over that. So same thing with the premise of doing schema migrations with a, uh, <clears throat> a relational database where you don't really roll the database itself. You're just doing the schema, tables, referential integrity, things like that. So with Apache Cassandra, we need to look at the key space as that particular piece of the architecture. So we'll assume that the key space is built, but 
I'm gonna add a feature or two around that. I think we should add a feature or two around that. So let's actually write that out and determine how we'll do that. So app will provide a way to create the initial key space based on various requirements. On configuration such as strat strategy, application factor, etc. Um, I don't need to know all the things just yet, but we'll we'll get that figured out. App will store connection information per pertinent pertinent to the database that it is is or needs to be working against um, and then uh, app will have the ability to uh, have the connection information passed in if this works more effectively for automation okay uh, app will initially provide a console based CLI style interaction model then we have app we will intend to build out some multi interface options for this application once the CLI is built out and operative yeah yeah I think that's a cool idea so let's build this let's build this application this is gonna be step one of doing this now on the c-sharp hour i will still be doing a number of other things introducing new features from the driver uh, for apache cassandra and datastax enterprise but we're also going to work on this application to really get more familiar with uh what we're trying to do when we're working with apache cassandra what we're trying to do with the drivers how to use the drivers and all that kind of jazz so with that um i don't know should i schema migration explorations so this is this is going to be our like test account. Well, let's get another one set up. New. Uh, we're gonna we're definitely gonna go the .NET Core route. So we need. We'll probably do let's see unit tests, class library, console application, SP.NET Core web application. Oh, do, 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 do. let's actually let's start with an empty solution. Here we go, and we'll call this ACSM, maybe, or I will call it Cassie Schema Migrator. CSM, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, we'll create a Git repo. Oh, Mercurial HG, that's cool. Create a directory for solution in here. Yes, please. So, okay, we're going to create that. Nyan Cat's going to get run in there for us. We'll do it in this window. Oh, I wonder if... We'll just use the driver, so we don't really need CQS... CQLS... SQL... CQL shell. We won't need CQL shell installed on a machine. Um... Let's here. Let's put that in the notes too. I'll put that right here. App will not require any uh, Apache, oops, Apache Cassandra related uh, CLI tools, drivers, 
or other elements on the machine that it executes from. Okay, I think that's that's a good feature requirement. All right, so let's bounce back over here. Cassie, sch Cassie schema migrator. Um, and now let's add our first project bits here. So new project. I'm going to do a unit test project. Um, we'll call it Cassie uh, Core Lib Tests. As such, actually, should I create the? Whoops. Yeah, let's use X unit. Hadn't used X unit in a million years. I'm going to be completely unfamiliar, but it'll be a good thing for us to go through. So Cassie Core Lib Tests. All right, I guess it's doing it. Yeah, there we go. Um, yes, please create ignore file. Oh, what do we even put in here now? V, Visual Studio. Or is it like, oh yeah, there's Visual Studio. It's probably all we need, right? Is this happening? Director fuse trash. Oh, that's that stuff. Okay. That's that's good enough to start. Whatever. So generate me this file. Uh, no, don't do that just yet. I think so. Now the other question is where where did it, where did it put it? I can't, I don't see it. Show all, show all files. Oh my goodness, there we go. That is beautiful. That's what I wanted to see. So we definitely wanted that. And then, since we're in JetBrains Riders, let's, let's use, let's actually light this up a little bit too. Boom, just for good measure. Do something a little different. Um, let's use VCS. Oh, there's Team City. We're gonna do VCS. Get, and then let's look at our commit. Commit file. No, I don't want to commit file. I want to do actually. Yeah, let's let's take a look at our record here. Oh, okay. So that's pretty much everything that I want. Yeah. Let's add adding dot get ignore file. That looks good. Let's use our cleanup options yeah cool all right so I'm gonna commit that or X unit 2.4 X unit visual studio 2.4.0 done at SDK that all looks good so then I think control K is it get commit directory well, let's look at the rest of our stuff so solution test let's get that fixed up a little bit no need to do it just yet so that test oh cool okay we got a little skeleton but we want to get in there and add our next project which will be a class library um, yep that looks good two two c sharp and then we'll call this cassie core lib Okay. Class one, unit test one, and then we're going to have our actual console application, Cassie console. There we go. Now let's also new project. What are the options we got here? We got an application, cross platform, Android, iOS, Mac OS, TV OS, watch OS. 
Can I even run that on here? Template author, jet brains. What else we got? We got Android. iOS. I don't even know if I can build iOS on here. We don't we don't really want to do it mobile anyway. Right now. Currently. Um what's their unit test project? What is this? Oh, a bunch of yeah, that stuff. Library OS. Yeah, I don't really want to do that. Unity class library. Unity installation is not found. I wonder if I can build a UI for this in Unity and just make it look crazy amazing, or if this is like stupidly proprietary. Eh. Fiddle with that later. So there is a web application, ASP.NET web application, from this perspective, but I could do that from here, use .NET Core, in my opinion, a much better option. So here's React with Redux. Web app with model view controller, web API, Razor class library, empty. So I'm wondering about what is the new thing, Blazor, Blazor. Maybe we'll get back and look at that later. Or install template. Is this gonna give me a nice, no. Ah, here we go. Let's browse the online templates and repositories just to see what our other options are. If it comes up. Ah, there we go. Hmm. That's cool. But, yep, we know that. And while we were here in GitHub land... Okay, so let's do .NET Boxed. Idea of this, Lambda, Cake Frosting... Oh, that's cool. VBM framework, Ito forms. I want to know what that is. Base code generator, GTK Sharp. Oh, is that for Linux? Maybe we'll take a look at that. Kineco, Cloud Boilerplate, Mono Game. You see scaffolding. This is event sourcing. Ah, interesting. Look at that. Particular templates. Ah, I see what that is. So that's that stuff. PowerShell core. Prism. For Prism for Xamarin Forms. Requires.NET CLI 2.0. Okay. Service stack. Hmm. Okay, so then we got some F sharp stuff. Fable library. Now this is the C sharp hour, but still just looking at all this stuff here. This framework can be used to build applications that run across multiple platforms using their native toolkit with an easy to use API. So make your application look and work as a native application on all platforms using a single UI code base. Framework currently supports creating desktop applications that work across Windows Form, WPF, Mono Mac, and GTK+. There is a mobile something, something, whatever. This framework was built so that using it in .NET is natural. For example, a simple Hello World might look like this. Or F-Sharp. Hey, 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 that's cool. Maybe I have to do an F-Sharp hour. Um, quick start guy. Let's look at the docs because this might be the instant winner here. Visual Studio Marketplace. We're not using that. We're using not this stuff. So .NET new. Hmm. So how do I add Okay, and I'm going to run the following command line. XAML, and then NuGet restore. Uh, 
Okay, so that's Ito. This is Ito still. Assemblies. Well, they have currently supported targets. So I found this via going this way. This is, oh, that's that thing that we we're just looking at. So how do I pull it into JetBrains Rider as a template? That's my question. Oh, and then Azure Pipelines succeeded. Cross-platform GUI framework for desktop and mobile applications in .NET. Right. So then here, install a template, cancel. Let's look at making a new template. For .NET new, creating, installing your own templates, da 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 da. Like I was saying, we need to get the console going first, so we'll come back to Ito. Let's make a note about that, though. And also, Mac job, Windows job. That's cool. Um, DevOps. Oh, yeah, I need to sign in to DevOps. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute. So we got everything. Console, core lib, core lib test. So we are off to a start with that. And let's set this as I need to set to configuration. Set Cassie console is the main thing. Show this page after launch. No, I don't want to launch that stuff. What is this for? I don't even I don't understand what that's for at all. This is a console app. It doesn't need these environment variables from what I know. Let's hit apply and see where we get with this. So I'll do a debug. And everything should just build. Okay, then execute the console. Boom, all right. And then here we should be able to run yeah, run unit test and get a little output here. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so there's our unit test. And then of course this will build by inference. Let's do a reference to core lib. Like so. There we go. Eh? Well, it should be in there. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go and actually change back the theme because my, my eyeballs are going to pop out of my head. Oh wow, iOS right there. Nice, okay. Theme Bash console, oh there it is, material theme. Theme chooser, let's go to, let's go to deep ocean theme. Yeah, there we go, that's a little better. All right, so we got this. <clears throat> uh, peripheral, let's call this, uh, environmental tasks so we need to set up a build set up a build for our application um, determine outputs for Mac OS Linux and Windows Set up documentation for our application. I think we might just use the wiki page. You know, I don't, I don't think we should 
go to some crazy extent. I mean, it's going to be a pretty straightforward application just from the, the items in the list there. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so it shouldn't be... Yeah, we don't, we don't need to set up like a crazy documentation, generation, fabrication thing. But as I like to do, I kind of try to go documentation first and then get into next steps about things. Um, that way I, have, I better explain to myself what I'm actually trying to build. So with that, next steps, we should go ahead and dive in and see where we can get with some of these environmental tasks. Um, oh, uh, do we need, uh, big question here. I don't know. I'll need Docker stuff to build, but maybe I should use some Docker containers to build the various pieces. I don't know if that's really necessary. I don't know. Actually, the container... Uh, I don't think we'll need it for the environmental aspect of it, for the build. We'll keep the build just straight. Console, DLLs or whatever. And then work from there but I'll still need local uh, docker, docker container for Apache Cassandra to work from, to work from. Yeah, there we go, okay. Uh, especially for the, the creation of key space, et cetera, et cetera, and just to work through the demos. But I also want to make sure that the unit tests aren't dependent on the database because we're just trying to test core first principle functionality on the class that I write. So we're going to try to keep that. We're going to try to keep that focus to that. Um, all right. This this looks good. So let's get this. First, let's get out on GitHub here. And let's actually go out to Riptano. Where's it? Oh, I gotta scroll to it. Sometimes I'm in too many code organizations. All right, in here, Jenkins CPP, DSC driver, there's our trucks. Oh, y'all shouldn't see most of those, ha ha. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna dev this. Since I'm building it, I'm just gonna put it on mine for now. We'll go new. <clears throat> What did I call it? I called it. I forgot what I called it. I write it up here. Let's do this though. I'm gonna do four, four, H four, core functionality. Patch Cassandra schema migrations. I didn't end up calling it that though. Where's my project? Cassie Schema Migrator. Yeah, we went with CSM Cassie Schema Migrator. Goal for running Apache Cassandra and data stacks. Enterprise PSC schema migrations. <clears throat> Cassie schema migrator. What is this? 
now it confirms that that seems weird. All right, so let's go to, actually, what do we need? VCS, git, if I do push, will let me add the, what? That's weird. Yeah, define remote. Ah, here we go. Sweet, adding the get ignore file. <clears throat> Does it know to do a dash u to map the thing? That is my question. All right. Ah, okay, there we go. Let's add a readme. So then I gotta do this, I guess. Yeah, that shows us the README. Very nice. All right now, let's take our notes. And we'll actually go from here down. We're gonna take those and we're gonna put them in our README file. And that'll, of course, change as we make progress. So then let's add our unit test file, program, I guess core lib, console, core lib. I'm doing control A to get all these in there. Then let's hear control, let's hit control K. Commit directory. Adding first projects and default skeleton files. There we go. Commit and push. Gracious, what is it doing? There we go, progress. <laughs> but, but, but. I have no idea why this is taking so long. That's really weird. I would have thought it would have been really just snappy, quick. <laughs> More cleanup code, okay. Cat's stuck now? No? Doesn't look stuck. <laughs> uh oh. Well, as we get this posted, I am out of coffee. I am also out of refreshing drink. So it looks like it's almost time to wrap up. But how are we with this push? Oh, 
it's still working. Oh, here we go. Push commits. Okay, origin to master. That's what we want to do. We have all our bits in here. So I'll go ahead and do a push. We have not broken any warnings or thrown thrown any warnings or errors, so that's good. I would assume to not have these at this early of a stage in the game. All right, so that looks like it went. Let's refresh and just check. And all right. So now the other thing that I want to do Maybe we'll just add wiki stuff for the project as the documentation. I think that's what I'll do. So I'm going to go into settings, though, and I'm going to actually take out a few social preview. What is that? That's new. All right, we're going to take out project projects. Or, or No, let's leave that in there. But I do want to... Or do I want to leave it in there? Projects, wiki insights, issues. Yeah, let's leave. We'll leave all that stuff in there. Actually, I was gonna take out. Well, I was thinking about taking out issues, but I don't want to do that because we want to work on this thing. All right. So yeah, everything's just gonna stay as it is. I gotta figure out this template thing. Download template. Whoa. Let's. Let's look at it. Let's see what we got here. Images should be at least 640 by 320 px pixels, or 1280 by 640. Oh, opening up GIMP already. Upload an image to customize your repository social media preview. Repo card template. We recommend leaving a 40 point border around the important details of your social card to make sure nothing gets cropped. Okay. So then do I just let's delete this? Oh no, what gotta select it right. There we go. Delete. Yeah, now, now we got a transparent piece. <laughs> oh. Let's get some black text here. Then uh, well, well actually where is the fill? There it is. So let's make that white and then put that in. Um, I'm gonna do that and then we'll get text going. Let's see, what do we want? Let's pick some text real quick. Not that, because that's not gonna do me any good. Mono space. Yeah, let's put that in. Get the right color here for it to stand out. And then we will start right here. And go with, what is it? So we're calling it Cassie. Woo, okay, maybe not that big. 64. Yeah, there we go. Cassie schema migrator. No, a little bit smaller considering it didn't fit. There we go. Let's shrink it down a little bit more. And then... Bold? Nah, I like this. And then we're going to center it. No, we're going to justify it this way. There we go. That should be centered. Okay. Cool. And then... I still want to do a fill, but let's do it this way. Uh, get a different color in here. Let's go with. Oh, what color should we go with here? Well, for right now, I'm going to pick a crazy green color. There we go. Do this. What did I? Do I need a new level, a new layer? Transparency, yes, please. All right, now let's try that again. 
No? Do I need to flatten it all? Let's try that. There we go. Okay, let's not use... Come on, give me the green. There we go. There we go. Alright, so I'm just deleting these edges to give us that pixel count that it requested. Like so. Here we go. And then let's do an export as. And the request was actually was it PNG, JPG? I guess what did we what did we get it in? Just save it. Desktop pictures, let's put it in. <clears throat> Cassie schema schema migrator. Well actually this should go in the repo. So let's do that. Downloads, no. Uh, let's do, do, do Adrian codes. Cassie schema migrator. Let's create a folder. We'll call it um, logo or image collateral. I don't know what to call it. It's, that's what it's going to be for now. So we're going to save the XCF. Better slow a slower compression. Oh, that's fine. Then let's do export as. Well, first let's check the image size to make sure we what they gave us. Yeah, okay. So then we're gonna do export as PNG. And then we'll do export as JPG. Oops. All right, so then let's get this. I guess edit, upload image, codes. Oh, Adrian. Oh, there we go. Codes. And then Cassie schema migrator. Image collateral. And go with the PNG. It's smaller. There we go. Nice. So do I need to save this? Is it saved? I guess it's saved. So now where do I see that? That is the question. But whatever. We'll figure that out in a minute. All right, so we've got our readme done. We got our initial code projects put together. We're basically ready to start. Um, I'm going to add these elements as issues. And then uh, basically as issue stories for us to work on. But before that, one other last little thing, addition here, we're going to do, let's see, where is it? Uh, what did they do with the, oh yeah, set up templates, that's what I want to do. So add a bug report, and then we're going to have a feature request, and then let's do custom template, preview and edit. We'll say issue, custom issue template. Uh, let's call it um, see, that's a feature request. This is going to be a uh, mm, story, a feature feature story. Or no, I'm just I'm just gonna go with feature request. Feature request is gonna be good enough. So, proposes changes, update issues templates, commit, and then let's see about syncing that up real quick. I'm going to actually do it via the CLI because I don't know. Well, actually, let's see, let's see how this handles it. So, we got this stuff now, and I want to do the git commit directory 
And yeah, okay, so it does give me the option. So I'm gonna add all these. Adding uh, collateral logo social media images for project on GitHub. Like that. And I'm gonna just commit that like so. So everything should be good there. And then I'm gonna do git pull right, repository. Yeah, pull. All right, and there's our bug reports and stuff. There's our coll image collateral, our issue templates. So that looks good. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> and then just for good measure, git commit directory, no changes. All right, cool. So we are all good to go, I believe. Or no, there is changes because Yeah. We're ahead by two commits. So let's let's push that up there. Git push origin master. There we go. So the writer did not it should have let me do a push, but I guess I would have had to go okay this then get and then push over here so control shift k and yeah it would have let me do it then with the with those pertinent changes but anyway i'm going to shut this down for now we are wrapping up again just to review if you go out to github for one go and star this project like so uh, fork it if you want to work on it. We went over the core functionality. I'll be adding the issues so people can work on those if they want to. I would love contributions. Uh, we're following a pretty basic schema migration tool uh, build out here. Just building it specifically for Apache Cassandra using C Sharp. So if anybody wants to jump in, very, very happy to take pull requests. Um, and we'll get this thing working in the next couple of weeks, working on it via the C Sharp Hour with everybody. And the last thing here that I'm showing you, oops, Data Stacks Academy events. Just to review one last time, we have coming up, let's see here, on the 26th, killer, killer video application development, that'll be Python. Um, with Jeff and David. Then we have the next C-sharp hour will be on May 2nd. So it's gonna be at a little different time at 1 p.m. instead of 10 a.m. PDT. Uh, then we're aiming to try to get the building the Geo App Trucks on DSC, it's episode five. Then another killer video application development here with Jeff and David. And then Christina and I will definitely be diving in on May 7th for the trucks application build continuing and then some more C sharp hours. Go out, check out our events page and we will be updating it with additional shows as we get those on the schedule. So we've got lots of good stuff coming for you. Again, thanks for watching live. Thanks for watching post live, whatever the case, hope you enjoyed the C sharp hour and I will see you next time.